Since 1985, the International Island Games Association has provided content into island life. By organizing NatWest Island Games, we're making sure that youngsters from uh, all over the world meet together every second year to compete. By competing towards each other and by meeting new cultures, they are developing as human beings. But not only, they take their new skills back home to their islands and they help out to develop their island life. There are many, many venues all over our member islands that has been developed and has been improved thanks to the NatWest Island Games. The NatWest Island Games is now an international sporting event. A chance every two years for competitors from small islands around the world to demonstrate their skills, set new records and to meet old friends. The Games embodies all that is best about amateur sport. But it would never have even started without the people from the Isle of Man. The Manx government was looking for ways to celebrate their year of sport, and they hit upon the idea that competitors from other islands should be invited to join the celebration. That's how, in 1985, the Inter-Island Games were born. From the beginning, the Games welcomed competitors from far and wide. Sportsmen and women from 15 islands came together in the Isle of Man in the middle of the Irish Sea. There was homegrown talent of the British Isles, the Viking spirit of Scandinavia, and even some Mediterranean magic from Gibraltar. The festival was such a success that everyone wanted to repeat it, so it was agreed to hold another Games two years later, and the Island Games Association was formed. Guernsey volunteered to host the 1987 event, and while the rain may have dampened things a little, praise for the event rained down just as hard. Since then, the Games have found their way all around Europe. To Orland, the Isle of Wight, Gibraltar, Jersey, Gotland, and then back to the Isle of Man and Guernsey, before heading back north to Shetland in 2005. The Games headed to the most southerly venue yet in 2007, with the Greek island of Rhodes hosting in blistering heat, before returning to Orland. Each island in turn bringing its own distinctive culture and feel to the occasion. It would be wrong to, to compare the different, the different games. It has changed so much over the years. From 1985, where we were like 700 competitors, it was only about competition, nothing else. As from 1999, now we took a, when we took a further step, when NatWest came in and we suddenly had a, a large sponsor. And the, the relationship that has really developed into partnership almost so, so many things that has changed, so it's not really right to, to compare the others. Since 1985, many more islands have joined the IGA. Canada's Prince Edward Island, Saramar from Estonia, and the Greek island of Rhodes have all become part of the family, with the Western Isles from Scotland making their debut as recently as 2005, quickly followed by the most recent addition, Menorca. They first stepped onto the stage at the impressive stadium in Rhodes in 2007. The NatWest Island Games has developed into one of the biggest multi-sport events anywhere. Each host island chooses the sports they wish to hold from a list of 18. 
Top class facilities are now being provided, but what doesn't change is the enthusiasm of the competitors. Upwards of 2,000 of them have been at each of the last few games, similar numbers to those involved in the Winter Olympics. And with numbers continuing to grow, the planning of the event has become an even more important element for a host island and brings some interesting challenges. Uh, an accommodation for more than 3,000 people when we have this small community as we have with small-scale tourism entrepreneurs, it was quite a challenge. Uh, so we have made a gigantic jigsaw puzzle <laughs> and put out the different sports, uh, sportsmen and women into accommodation places where they're close to their, their venues where they will compete. At every Games, representatives from all the member islands meet to hear bids from islands keen to host the event in the future. This is one of the key decisions of the week, especially as hosting the event can leave a sporting legacy for an island, but it is also a massive commitment beginning years in advance of the actual event. We learned a lot from our last bid when we uh, lost the, uh, the bid for the 2011 Games to Isle of Wight and it was our first go around and we were getting lots of questions then. And the main thing wasn't about our facilities, which we, as we said before, we could host the Games tomorrow with our facilities. But we, um, you know, the cost of accommodation um, is a concern. We're a tourist island and the summer is our high season. As uh, the audience saw in there, we have the full support of our government. Um, we are a country as opposed to an island of a country, um, self-governing um, uh, UK independent territory, but we have our own parliament with our own budget and the sports ministry and other um, ministries are behind us uh, absolutely. So with that support we feel confident that we can keep costs down and have um, uh, visitors come. Uh, the tourist department will be very interested in getting repeat visitors from Europe because that's one of their campaigns. Of course, not every island is big enough to be able to host the event, but in 2003, a neighbourly gesture from Guernsey helped two of the smaller member islands have their moment of glory. Alderney and Sark are both part of the bailiwick of Guernsey, and the pair were each given an event to host. In Sark's case, they had the chance to show off their shooting facilities and breathtaking views, while Alderney residents were given the chance to see football on their local pitch. But no host island can make the event run successfully without that most important ingredient, volunteers. Those who help the island games are every bit as crucial as those who make headlines for their efforts at all the recent Olympic and Commonwealth competitions. After we have ordered the games 2005 in Shetland, we started with 10 people. And we have been working since September 2005 very hard to produce the plans and so on. And after we had the plans there, we ask uh, people to come in. And we have today about 1,000 volunteers which have helped us, which is very, very important. Businesses from the local communities have always backed the athletes and the games, and their involvement and commitment is always crucial. However, in 1997, the IGA Executive Committee saw that it was necessary to find a bigger sponsor willing to support both the IGA and the whole event. So, in an effort to place the Games on a firmer footing, the association approached the offshore bank NatWest to ask if they could become the main sponsor. The bank agreed to commit both funds and time to make the sponsorship work. The Gotland Games became the first to bear the name of a sponsor and the NatWest Island Games was born. But for the deal to work, there had to be benefits for both sides. Well, I think it's uh, part of our ethos of uh, being a community bank. Uh, NatWest has uh, actually sponsored this for nigh on 12 years now, and we've, uh, we've seen the, the NatWest Island Games grow and grow and grow. But uh, what's important for us is it's, we, we're based in four of the islands, and uh, this is an opportunity for us to actually uh, see sport develop in, in these islands where we're based, but also across the, all of the other islands, uh, 25 in all. Uh, that's why it's quite important for us. It's, it's a good way for NatWest to actually return something back into the community. The sponsor is not only concerned about their own brand, they're also concerned about the organization as a whole. And, and therefore NatWest, uh, since 99, they, they have been really vital in, in helping also the organization and not only their own brand. While all the 25 member islands could be described as small, certainly in terms of population, some have to make a huge effort just to get to the Games. 
Competitors from the Falkland Islands and St Helena spend far longer travelling than they do competing. First we had a five day boat trip to Cape Town and then we stayed there, there for two days. Then we had a 12 hour flight to Heathrow. Then we stayed at, at Gatwick, Gatwick for two days. Yeah. Then we flew to Guernsey. But transport is not the only issue. Some islands often don't have access to the right kit and equipment. However, that's never been a barrier to taking part. We normally borrow rifles from the host country and um, shooting equipment. Um, so we basically have to familiarise ourselves with the settings and what have you. So it could, uh, could sometimes be daunting at times, but it's okay. It means a great deal, actually. Uh, we don't compete in many sports. Um, uh, off the island, but um, this is this is the one we do, and um, I'm honoured to be asked to represent them. That camaraderie among the competitors is reflected among the supporters too. From athletics to volleyball, spectators turn up in huge numbers to help create an electric atmosphere for the competitors. The fact that a huge number of records and personal bests are reached during the games is certainly helped by the incredible support received. Indeed, the Games have produced many sports stars who have shone at the very top level. Some have used the Games to say farewell. Finnish international athlete Janne Holman brought his career to a close in his home island of Åland in 2009, winning two gold and one silver medal. Others have used the Games as a springboard to success, a chance to sample high-quality competition and prepare themselves for the bigger stage ahead. All the uh, people in the islands look towards the island games and look towards their own local athletes. And, and for me, that really spurred me on for some great performances. When it was in Guernsey, actually, I had some of the best performances of my life in terms of my 400 hurdles, which obviously I went on to go to, go to the World Championships for and become British champion. It's a close camaraderie, really, between the teams, and uh, it's a different feeling. It's a more friendly feeling and kind of everyone spurring everyone on other than just uh, kind of supporting individual athletes, I'd say helps any young person in any of the sports that they do to realise how, um, how to deal with competing against other nationalities, compete in an international competition um, um, and the processes that go into those competitions like call room procedures and go, um, conducting yourself in a village and dealing with other people from other sports and you make friends so there's a lot to learn from that experience that can help you, you know, to Commonwealth Games, to World Championships and Olympics. The NatWest Island Games is here to stay and is firmly part of the sporting calendar of each and every island in the association. The immediate future has been secured by the extension of the NatWest sponsorship deal and more islands than ever are coming forward to bid to host the Games. As the Games goes from strength to strength, everyone involved is ensuring that they don't forget where they came from and how they earn the nickname of the Friendly Games.